I thought I'll build a, a, a really fast prototype of a small panel using rubber magnet because it's uh, fast to do. Um, yeah, and I thought I'm not gonna use the CNC. I'm not gonna do fancy stuff. I'm I'm gonna use some metal, some plastic, some of the rubber magnet I cut to length already, and do it this way for a change. I mean, it could be nice. I I, I felt like I wanted to make something simple, fast, stupid, small, using aluminium wire, no fancy plotting. Because it's much faster, that's the main reason. Instead of drawing up a whole thing and then it ends up in the bin as I usually do. So this is kind of the size of panel I used to make eight years ago or something. And apparently I forgot what it did. Well, of course it made sound, but... Um, so yeah, I'm gonna attach these magnets here. This metal is too big, I'll leave it too big, I think, because I don't want to use the grinder or metal cutting or plasma cutting because, uh, well, noise and such. So I'm gonna use this piece of metal as is. I will cut this piece of plastic down to size to fit it. That's what I'm gonna do. First off, I'm gonna get some glue. I obtained some 3M 30 enough glue. I have to buy new glue, I see. And I use a kitchen sponge. To whoop, put some glue on these magnets. And put some glue on this metal. I put the piece here so I know uh, I don't have to put glue underneath here. So it's gonna be something like this and So this time I work the other way around. Normally I make a frame first, now I'm gonna glue the magnets on first, then make a frame. Ba -da 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 -da. That's fast. Okay, so this is where my metal is gonna sit, right there. I'm gonna do this by hand. this then we need some more material
Okay. Um, let me see. I need some glue that's fast because, well, we ain't got all day. So this is polyurethane glue and we're gonna use a bit of sandpaper on these pieces. Or a sanding sponge thingy. piece under the on the water for a little bit I wonder if activator works as well might be might be the case <coughs> um, so I'll grab a garbage bag to protect my bench Part. Hello. There it is. What's the best way? Add glue on here, then dump it on, I think. wear gloves I might grab gloves real quick this is yes this is the right stuff it's probably hardened yeah shit uh, pokey pokey ah why you never use gloves on things that turn. Now my I have to clean this or my drill is useless. Then we use clampy. These don't have such a reach. Let me clamp more on the back side. This clamp is huge.
and now we wait. And I'll uh, get some coffee. I hope it is moist enough to work. And for how long, that's the question. I'll give it a half an hour or an hour. See ya. So, this one is not yet completely dry. But to save time, I'll stretch up some mylar. Uh, by not cutting off this piece, uh, it's gonna be annoying cutting the panel free. But for now, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll cut that piece of metal off tomorrow because it makes a lot of noise, which... Well, it's too late to make a lot of noise. So I'm gonna stretch this by hand, starting at the corners. I don't have a very critical resonance I want to pursue or something. I'll see where it ends. I'll just give it quite some tension. You don't have to be careful. The added weight does not influence it. Now it is annoying that if there's glue on the magnet, so I'll try to not put glue on the magnets. Wait for this to dry. Has to be completely clear. So I'll leave it here and uh, come back in half an hour or whatever, how long it takes. Well, <clears throat> that's a bit longer than half an hour. Hopefully it still sticks. <laughs> okay. use the magnet pen way or at least this is how I did it before I'm not sure if they still do it like this use some uh, 3m 77 throwing all 3m names around so I'll use some carton here Try not to spray too much on my bench. So some Super 77. Mm 
Now I'll get my coil wire, which... It's gonna be thinner than... Well, in the end I, I will not use any aluminium wire. But for now I will, because it's fast. And since I want a decent impedance, I'll use rather thin wire. <clears throat> it's gonna be 0 0.172 millimeters thick wire. And to form a nice impedance, ooh, that's sticky. Uh, I need uh, two extra turns on the sides. So what I'll do is I'll start here. Back and forth, back and forth. Now we're gonna go back to the start. Go back like this. Do a few more turns, two more turns, in fact. Back on the spacer. There we go here. This is where it comes down, so here we have to go up. Hard to see a gray wire on a gray glue layer. Okay, now we're gonna add a top coat of, of uh, 30NF. I want to add some connection points because these wires are very thin and they will break if I connect anything else to it. So I'll grab a piece of copper tape, which is easier to solder to. It's not that sticky anymore. And I'll add it here. Doesn't have to look good. Now I got some new solder, it's aluminium solder, or it is just normal solder, but it has a core that I guess does the same as the flux, except that this is faster. It does leave a nastier looking joint, but that might be my temperature of the iron, I don't know. So wire on top of there and hopefully I can solder through the isolation. Not too sure about that. I think I should test that real quick without the copper. That's the case. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it worked. It's not the nicest looking solder. Let's measure if we did in fact connect anything. Yeah, 4.1 ohm, so it's connected. I opted for 3.9 or something. I think that's rather close. So, this acts like a strain relief. Now I can attach just a random wire. Tin them a bit. Thanks, Nick, for the link to the solar, of which I I looked for years, could not find it, but apparently it's not that hard. I'll use a heat gun to speed up this process a bit, but from far away because I don't want to hurt the tension on the foil. Put a piece of tape over here, I think. I got no tape, so I don't. Well, there you go, a very ugly panel. It's not that hard to make a very ugly panel. Pretty high resonance. I'm gonna check what it does. So, there we have it. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. Uh, it does look different than uh, last time you saw it. Um, and the reason is I used very thin wire that normally is used for tweeters. Uh, but it, it gave me uh, a four ohm load, which was what I was looking for. Uh, tested that and it works, of course. Uh, I'll show you the measurements real quick. Well, in a minute or so. Uh, then decided to use something I know should work but never used is um, getting thicker wire and add more turns. So doubling the turns should add I believe 3 dB and we'll check that later on. Because I could not reach the 4, 4 ohm I had before with thicker wire. Uh, it was kind of uh, annoying to put on there, that's why it looks messy. <laughs> uh, so I only went up to 3 wires per gap instead of the actual four wires I calculated. So <laughs> the impedance is a little bit lower, it's 2.5 or 2.4. So uh, yes, it will eat a little bit more power and should be a little bit more uh, efficient uh, as well. So I have to calculate it back to four ohm low, see what, what remains is the benefit of using multiple uh, wires if impedance remains the same. So um, yeah, so a very quick and dirty panel. Uh, there's a little bit of felt on the back. Uh, I think it should be there. I can remove it later on, I don't know. Uh, better would be to have the felt uh, behind the membrane on top of the magnets if the clearance allows it. Now, I was planning to use this from uh, 4 or 500 hertz. Um, an excursion should not be that insane.
but then again it's a really tiny panel as well uh, if, you, if you lower that uh, frequency let's say from 500 to 250 Hertz then I all of a sudden need four times as much panel yes that's quite a lot uh, now in this case that's not entirely true uh, it should be a little bit less because if you look at the bigger ones uh, behind there uh, these are of course not like 20 times as big so I know you it, normally it should be four times as big but it might be, be that this is in fact already quite big for the 500 Hertz I want to reach I'm pretty sure it is actually um, but still uh, I don't get like solid output down to uh, let's say 300 or something and the reason for that is of course it's an open baffle as well so it rolls off uh, so you have to compensate for that as well uh, so I don't know might have to look into that and oh yeah also the resonance of this panel is actually a little bit too low I thought I stretched it out up really nicely but by adding this heavier coil the resonance dropped again like 60 Hertz or something from I believe 170 down to 127 which is way too low for this panel it should be more near the the crossover frequency I know it will give you this this nasty resonance hump in the crossover region which is not ideal either but I rather uh, damp that away and have a more solid output down to 300 or 400 Hertz instead of having a peak at 127 that I'm not using at all so uh, even this crappy panel could benefit from some changes or even maybe the most changes uh, but yeah it's something uh, I put together in like half an hour which is cool I think I'll show you some measurements I'm gonna do it the camera old-fashioned nasty way I think or maybe I'll post it as well over this screen but then at least I have something to talk about so this is the contraption I build uh, so let's see here uh, you can see the mid-range is a little bit louder now than the rest but it's mostly because I measured it quite close uh, the reason for that is that I wanted to actually measure the distortion and not so much the frequency response but this is how the frequency response looks without smoothing at 50 centimeters so uh, a little bit mid-range heavy here it is a little bit smoother um, and this is um, only the frequency response of the driver the mid-range and the tweeter you can see this hump here which will get less when you move away from the loudspeaker a little bit but you can see clearly it, it drops a, a like a brick here also because the crossover is here but uh, without it it does make this drop as well <coughs> I, could, I think putting it in a uh, in a box might help if it works at all I might measure actually the teal small parameters but I'm not too sure how to measure that on a planar magnetic I mean normally you have a ri rigid cone and you add a known weight and do the measurement in this case uh, it is not rigid so I'm not sure if adding like let's say 50 grams is gonna work I probably have to like put a bit much bigger weight on there like not in weight but in surface area to have a more correct result and it is fun to try I will try that and see what it does in a tiny box according to the teal small parameters might be completely off because I'm measuring the teal small parameters wrong but who knows I wonder what happens to this yeah this dive um, so yeah um, but here is the measurement of the, the the panel I made on the video itself and it's not looking very nice I mean it was also quite late when I had to measure so it's all at really low volume but 
I don't care. I mean, I just wanted to see how the curve looked. And it looks uh, terrible, of course. Uh, you see this, the same rise thing as with the, the panel I have right now. So it might just be baffle loss or what it is. Open baffle loss. I don't know how you call it. but um, So yeah, you got this whoop de whoop and that's because it's wire and, and the cone or at least in this case the mylar breaks up. I believe. Uh, the lower the tension on the foil is, uh, the lower this gets as well. So it's kind of when the resonance drops, uh, this also changes. And you can see that here. It has the same whoop de doop, but at a lower frequency. Um, and if we look at the, the resonance, this is the tiny wire. It's at 168, and the other one is at. 137 so I was off by 10 Hertz um, yeah so this was a, a very low volume and there's quite some distortion here as well still uh, this is the distortion right now uh, at a much louder volume uh, with the tweeter the tweeter has a weird peak here and I'm not sure what that is it's pretty clean overall except for this weird peak might be a cavity resonance or something. Well, anyhow, um, this looks all quite nice. Of course, above 2K, the tweeter is going to work. But uh, this is also, you know, uh, 0, 0.0 something THD. So third harmonics is probably in the noise floor. But here it, it goes up. Uh, and I'm not sure. It might be just the panel. But it might also be partly because it drops off there. And another thing was, I think I can clean this a little bit up with dampening inside the panel. And I can also clean this up with higher resonance. So upping the resonance, oh, it's a touch screen, I forgot. Upping the touch, uh, the, <laughs> the resonance up here uh, will also, uh, you gain more output and I think the resonance here will drop as well or the distortion well anyhow uh, yeah if I can reach if I can cross at 400 that would be perfect I mean yeah half half an hour work maybe uh, maybe a little bit more but so yeah wire is not completely stupid it is fast. I will make a uh, a foil one, I think. But uh, this triple wire thing you cannot do with foil. I can do two foil traces, but then I have to use the front and the back, which I'm planning to, on doing at least for a test. Uh, well, not to see if it works. I mean, I know it will work, but uh, how much work is it? And did I gain anything? Should gain in theory 3db, but who knows? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna calculate this impedance back to the 4 ohm impedance, and then we can see what the net result is uh, in between these t two. Because now it's around 6 db, uh, 6, 7 db gain from just changing out the wires, but I also changed the impedance. So I'll have to calculate back to the correct same impedance and then we know how much we gain by using thicker wire and multiple turns. I calculated it and uh, uh, the impedance difference would make up for 2.4 dB maximum. So I measured around 6, so we got like a, a 3.6 dB gain still left over, sort of, 3.6, 4, maybe 4. Uh, so that is at least 3 dB, 